A reading from Isaiah chapter 23, entitled, An Oracle Concerning Tyre. Now, Tyre and Sidon are great, enormous, rich trading places. It's like the New York City, like the Alexandria. They're powerful places. First, let it be established that the second temple was built by King Herod. And it was incredible. It was an amazing building. It was an enormous temple. And it was the center of the atonement for sin and all of the culture of the Hebrew lineage coming down to the lineage of Judah, Jewish people. Every year, there was the Passover Seder in the homes and the sin lists were read and that is where your sins were atoned for when your grandfathers and your fathers and elders mentioned the sins that had come to their family because you're part of their family. And the sin lists go from the big Passover Seder party with the little lamb that your kids have been raising for the past year in a cluster of families. And all the children know that that lamb is going to die. Its throat is going to get cut as the sin lists of your family are held over its head and that is part of the purpose of the temple because there is no forgiveness for sin without the shedding of blood. Make note of that. There is no forgiveness for human evil behavior without the shedding of blood. That's why we are immersed in the water and blood of Yeshua. So the temple was enormous and serious. And once a year, the high priest would go in the temple at the time of the Passover Seder in all of the family homes. But Yeshua transformed the enormous temple and this amazing Ark of the Covenant box reality transformed that, set it aside. No more tabernacle, no more temple, no more physical structure. Now, the sacrifice of the body and blood that forgives sins is in the cup and the bread of the mystical body and blood of Yeshua going into our bodies. How do you prepare for this new temple? What is this new temple? It is a cluster of family men who are carrying well the burden of their families, sheltering many people who are delighted to walk single like Jesus in the new covenant for greater eternal rewards and benefits. The teaching is that the Son of God came and did not enjoy a marriage and said, if you can understand the benefits of walking single like me, you should go ahead and do that for your life. Does he say it's going to be easy? No way. But... He institutes this conscience cleansing time. No one is in the communion except for someone who is willing to die for Jesus right now today. Are you, be, are you willing to be tortured to death right now today? You can be in this communion. Okay. Then, what are the familiar demons that remain in your life after your salvation? Because God allows some troubling spirits to remain on individuals and families. And it's important for the men especially. Because whatever doors they have open to troubling spirits will come upon the women and the children. 
So it's the men who lead the cheerful, okay, I'm still bad in this area, and I did great this week, and I thank you for your prayers and all your close help. We're really helping each other. The conscience cleansing of a group of families before the taking of communion. This is serious, enormous stuff. This was never presented to me with joy. In the Methodist church I grew up with, communion was like this kind of spooky thing that only the adults did. But I discovered that the children lead the way. It's a celebration. The children, in their innocence, receive the communion because they are under, they are, they are covered by the adults who are walking in the teachings of Jesus responding to all circumstances with the spirit of Jesus and building apostles who are going out and clustering new holy of holies temples of family groups that are closed. If you want to join the way of life group, you have to hear all of the instructions that Jesus taught and understand how your lifestyle must change immediately if you're to be immersed in Yeshua and walk in his way. So, these are the things that were never cheerfully presented to me. Oh my gosh, we get to actually connect with God. You cleanse your conscience, you talk about your troubles. When everyone feels at peace and that their consciences are clean, then we receive the communion and then we relax and begin asking the difficult questions of our life circumstances, even business situations and relationship situations, and how we do our outreach. How, wh where will you t please tell us where to go to find someone who needs help and refreshment? So, this is a warning to rich society. God is basically saying, you have a lot of fancy stuff going on, and it's all going to be ruined. The Oracle Concerning Tyre. Wail, O ships of Tarshish. This is the beautiful fleet. For your fortress is destroyed. When they came in from Cy Cyprus, they learned of it. Be still, O rich inhabitants of the coast, you merchants of Sidon. Your messengers crossed over the sea and were on the mighty waters. Your revenue was the grain of Sihor. Your revenue was the harvest of the Nile. You were the merchant of the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea has spoken. The fortress of the sea, saying, I have neither labored nor given birth. I have neither reared young men nor brought up young women. When the report comes to Egypt, they will be in anguish over the report about you, Tyre and Sidon. You rich and famous people have become ruined. Cross over to Tarshish. Wail, O inhabitants of the coast. Is this your exultant city, whose origin is from days of old, whose feet carried her to settle far away? Who had planned this against Tyre, the bestower of crowns? whose merchants were princes, whose traders were the honored of the earth. The Lord of hosts has planned it to defile the pride of all your glory, to shame all the honored ones of the earth. Cross over to your own land, O ships of Tarshish. This is a harbor no more. He has stretched out his hand over the sea. He has shaken the kingdoms Adonai, the Most High God has given command concerning Canaan to destroy its fortresses. He said, you will, you will exult no longer. O oppressed virgin daughter Sidon, rise, cross over to Cyprus. Even there you will have no rest. Trouble, trouble, trouble for the rich people. Trouble, trouble, trouble for the ones who are established and prideful. Look at the land of the Chaldeans. This is the people. It was not Assyria. They destined Tyre for wild animals. They erected their siege towers. They tore down the palaces of Tyre, and they made her a ruin. Wail, O ships of Tarshish, 
for your fortress is destroyed. From that day, Tyre will be forgotten for 70 years, the lifetime of one king. At the end of 70 years, it will happen, happen to Tyre, as in the song about the prostitute. Here's the song. Take a harp, go about the city, you forgotten prostitute. Make sweet melody, sing many songs, so that you may be remembered. This is a thing about remembering the past, singing a song that remembers the goodness of the past. At the end of 70 years, Adonai, the Lord, God will visit Tyre, and she will return to her trade, and she will prostitute herself with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Her merchandise and her wages will be dedicated will be dedicated to the Lord. Her profit will not be stored or hoarded, but her merchandise will supply abundant food and fine clothing for those who live in the presence of Adonai. Impending judgment on the earth. Now Adonai, the Most High God, is about to lay waste to the earth and make it desolate, and he will twist its surface. He will twist the surface of the earth, and he will scatter the inhabitants of the earth. And it shall be with the people, so with the priest. As with the slave, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the creditor, so with the debtor. It will be the same for everyone. The earth shall be utterly laid waste and utterly despoiled. For Adonai, the Lord, has spoken this word. The earth dries up and withers. The world languishes and withers. The heavens languish together with the earth. The earth lies polluted under its inhabitants. For they have transgressed laws. The people have violated the statutes. The people have broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse devours the earth, and the inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth dwindled, and few people are left. The wine dries up, the, the vine languishes, all the merry-hearted people sigh and are sad. The mirth of the timbrels is stilled, the noise of the jubilant has ceased, the celebrating is over. The mirth of the lyre is stilled. No longer do they drink wine with singing. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of chaos is broken down. Every house is shut up and no one can enter. There is an outcry in the streets for lack of wine, indicating a lack of joy, a lack of joy celebration. All joy has reached its eventide. The gladness of the earth is banished. Desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered into ruins. For thus it will be on the earth and among the families, as when an olive tree is beaten, as at the gleaning when the grape harvest is ended. They lift up their voices. They sing for joy. They shout from the west over the majesty of Adonai. Therefore, in the east, give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea, glorify the name of Adonai, the Elohim of Yisrael. From the ends of the earth, we hear songs of praise, songs of glory to the righteous one. But I say, pine away. I pine away, woe is me. For the treacherous deal treacherously. The treacherous deal very treacherously. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. Whoever flees at the sound of the terror will fall into the pit, and whoever climbs out of the pit will be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are open and the foundations of the earth are trembling. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is torn asunder. The earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunkard. It sways like a hut. Its transgressions lie heavy upon it. 
and it falls and it will not rise again. On that day, Adonai will punish the hosts of heaven in heaven. And Adonai will punish on earth the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together like prisoners in a pit. They, the heavenly host and the kings of the earth, will be shut up in a prison, and after many days they will be punished. Then the moon will be abashed and the sun ashamed, for the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. And before his elders, he will manifest his glory. That is Isaiah chapter 23, 23 and 24, just for your tender listening. The refreshment of Yeshua be upon you. The guidance of the Holy Spirit be upon you in all of your circumstances. Sing and speak in the gift of the Holy Spirit language for it strengthens your mind, your emotions, and your willpower. Sing, whisper, talk, and shout in the Spirit. Gather together your people and be cheerful about admitting your faults, your bad practices, your weaknesses, and even the demons that remain, that God allows to remain after salvation. This is one of the ways where we can see that we truly love Christ. I have a perfect friend. Let me tell you how I am still imperfect after my friend has renewed my soul. That is the beginning of the communion group. It's honesty, good cheer, and a time of the family freedom party where we cleanse our hearts together, then we do communion, then we ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. What if it's time for us to move to a different location? What if God actually wants to, us to develop our business? What if there is a really special outreach opportunity that we never thought of that is given to all of us during these times of closing the doors, gathering together, and becoming the beautiful, majestic temple in the presence of Adonai with Jesus physically present. Read Luke chapter 24 again and see how when Jesus' story is being told, he shows up, he disappears, and he shows up again. <laughs> He's everywhere, wherever he is being mentioned, acknowledged, and utilized as the blood. There is no forgiveness for human evils without the shedding of blood. Receive the communion after you admitted all of your faults and your consciences are clean. Peace be with you.